Hi, it's Fab Pauly here and welcome to BizJet TV, the place to be to get your quantum key. What is a quantum key? It's a key, as you turn that key, you accelerate and go into quantum speed. And that's what the business jet does. That's what business aviation is all about. It's about giving you more time and accelerating your speed so you can go out there and do deals before other people. Now I know in the mainstream media, there's lots of talk about the private jet being a luxury item, but it is not a luxury item. It can be, but it's mainly a business tool. And this is what we do on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe, click on the bell, which it's a notification bell, so every time we publish a new video, you'll get notified. And if you haven't shared this video, please share and like. And so let's get into BizJet TV and this episode, see how you can get your quantum key. Off we go. Yeah, now let's talk about the, the recent 737 MAX accident. Now, your experience instructor on the 737. There's been a lot of information come out now as a result of the investigation of both the Ethiopian crash and the one that happened in Indonesia. What do you think is the core problem uh, uh, that caused that accident? Well, myself, uh, I never flew the Max, but I have read a lot of stuff, and i seen the Max simulator up here in Boeing. And this beautiful aircraft is uh, an improved 737. For sure, this new engine with a lot of thrust and stuff, they thought, that I think, that what I believe, Boeing said, oh, we need a stick pusher because these people will never realize that they got too much thrust, they will never lower the nose. Yeah. Just by putting your thrust back, the mm -hmm. nose will drop. Yeah. So they don't take push it. Just yeah. bring the thrust back. Yeah. Because those engines are wing and not yeah. the engine in the tail. Yeah. Different way of for sure. Ethiopian and Indonesia, they offered them the 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 warning system. You know, they, there were two two systems. Mm -hmm. They said they could something is wrong with the system. They didn't buy the system because it's, you know they want to save money. Not maybe because uh, the, the type rating is the same as the engine. They went also for the minimum training difference. You know, maybe two-day grand school, mm -hmm. and three well, here you keep, go and fly. That is allowed, but I don't think it's fair. So do you, th so do you, think, so, so do you think then most of the problem is Boeing? Boeing should have been more careful with the manuals and with the training, or, or is, it, is it more the fault of the airline? I think it's both. Both, yeah, yeah both I, I agree, I agree. Boeing should have tell them, you have to buy this warning system because this plane have a problem. We got a lot of trust. So the pilot, we already noticed that they need some help. So giving uh, so on the training, make you know, make more input to give some training of this kind of situations. Yeah. I don't think they never did. Because also to that in a normal NG type rating, runaway stabilizer, stalls, unusual attitude, hard over, uh, stabilizer jam, flight control jam. But, you know, to do all those training, you, have, you cannot do the minimum training. So it's supposed to be part of the, the requirements to get a type. What I'm seeing in my career, not everybody did everything. So just minimum required to sign you for the checkway. So if you had an aircraft that you already know too much trust, mm -hmm. then so we have to put extra from the other model. Mm -hmm. an extra stick pusher and you have give them the choice to buy the, the the extra like when you buy a car do you want the airbag or not yeah do you want a automatic or manual this is we're playing with an ac or an airbag yeah we are playing that in the air you cannot stop in this gas station and change <laughs> the tire. yeah exactly yeah so, so give me the warning disconnect autopilot disconnect auto throttle disconnect trims fly in hand and come back Mm -hmm. but now they, the airline, they don't want you to fly hands, no matter what. Yeah. On this three percent, they want you to engage autopilot, a minimum engage attitude, two hundred feet. On the seven eight, minimum disengage attitude, one hundred feet. Disengage well, I mean, I, I, I remember when when I flew with you back in the day on, on the on the Dornier three two eight. What you always used to say to me: if the automatics are doing something strange, just disconnect and fly manually. And yeah. I had uh, two or three situations later on in my career. Where I had a situation where I just I just remembered your words. I disengaged the automatics and flew manually, and there was no problem. And use primary flight display. Forget yeah. about flight direct. Yeah. Use your normal uh, flying and go back to basic. When yeah. you took your prop, yeah, heading, altitude, speed, and pitch. Well, they don't know how to do that anymore because the company they don't want you to. Do. Yeah, they just want you to net autopilot and don't do nothing. So also that also is a part of the, what I think happened there. It was not an impossible way to get out, but yeah. it was not open 
easy if you and nevertheless if this pilot didn't understood what was going on. Yeah. Well, if he hadn't been trained, if he's never seen the scenario, I mean, I always think of there was an incident on a Falcon 7X a few years ago where it ended up in an unusual attitude. And the pilot, the first officer actually, had been a former fighter jet pilot in the French Air Force. And he remembered a technique that he'd learned in the Air Force. And he immediately got the airplane out of the situation and saved the day. Uh, had he not had that, that military training, uh, the plane would have crashed. So, yeah, you're, you're right. In, yeah, in every Boeing manual, but people sometimes I don't think they read everything from A to Z. Yeah. So they just, up to here is enough, I stop reading. From A to Z, it's written black and white. We cannot write everything that could happen. Yeah. So your experience is part of the manual. So if you never had any experience, or you didn't love your job so much to, you know, to learn, to read from an accident, get informed, be up to date with all this happening in aviation, you know, that you, that, that what I call them second class pilots. They are standard, but they are second class. Because standard they all are. But they are second class. Up to here is enough. For me, it's enough. No, you have to go further than that. You have to do. No, you can't. Can't. What are you doing? I'm doing troubleshooting. What is that? That's DCA stuff. No, no, that's not DCA. That's experience. If that thing doesn't work, I have to investigate. I'm not just gonna. What's gonna happen? Happens. God can help you, but he can no problem. You have to fix. And that's why you have to be, if you have a good training, good experience, and you have an incentive from the company, maybe you can get out from any situation and being in all type of situations. I only miss it every time I say, I only miss it my whole career. This year is going to be 50 years legally flying. Mm -hmm. I never have uncontrollable fire. I never have explosive compression. And I never have hijacking. The arrest or the emergency. Reading any book of any type of aircraft I had, and I'm here talking to you today. It could be possible, but you have to know how to handle it. That's all from me on this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and share this video. And uh, that's all from Fab Polly at BizChat TV, and I'll see you in the next one.